Hi, welcome to Sister Strong, a podcast and video series all about possible. I'm your host, Betsy Wiersma. This podcast and video series is all a way to stand together, Sister Strong, as we share ideas and insights and connections and just lift each other up through the journey. It's thanks for your toolbox, so try them on and see what works for you. Today, Chris Chopiak is on the show. I'm so happy to have her here. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Betsy. It's really good to be here, too. Um, you've done longer presentations with us, longer videos with us, but today is the Sister Strong series. So we are just heading into tips, techniques, and things. And you, as you know, we know you as a change agent, you help corporations and people visualize and see where they're going and get there with your maps and your creativity. But how do we translate that now into this time and this place for, for tactics people can use? Um, tell them a little bit about you and then give us what you got. Okay, so uh, thank you, Betsy. So my name is Chris Chopiak and I live in Denver, Colorado. I have a boutique consulting firm called Arlo Soul. Visualize innovation. So Arlo, like Arlo Guthrie and soul, like, you know, right here, your soul. Um, that is the Welsh word for innovation. So in times like these, um, I'm always thinking about uh, what's the pivot? What's the change? How can we be more agile? Um, to be able to respond and not react to all the crazy that's happening out there right now. So when I was thinking about this, uh, about our conversation this morning, one of the things that I thought about is um, Sister Strong. And so one of the things I'm getting a lot of uh, solace, affirmation, and inspiration from are sisters. So those women, girls, um, also boys, not restricted just to the sisters, but um, those people who are asking provocative questions, offering some cool poetry, doing their art and sharing it with me, um, getting together, just like touching base with friends. So really leaning in to that sister, what connects us and, and makes us really strong, especially in times when our emotions, you know, might be doing uh, one of these roller coasters. And which brings me to my second point. So it's like, okay, so I'm surrounded by the love and I'm surrounded, um, I'm feeling it. Like I feel optimistic. I feel like I, I know we're gonna make it through this. Um, and I have people who are gonna support me in that. Then what do you do with that? And so uh, the second thing I would like to offer, this is a specific um, tip in addition to hanging with your sisters and you with your people, but it's as you look at what's next for you, the biggest thing that the biggest opportunity that we have right now is around hope and it's a, around really articulating what do i hope for the future what do i hope for my family for my future for my tribe for my people and you know what i'm going to say here betsy one of the best ways to be able to do that is to draw hope so i have to give my good colleague and friend ulrich rudebeck in sweden you know a plug here because he and I had this conversation and we were talking about what would it look like? What is it like to draw hope? And it's hard, um, but guess what? The people who do it the best are kids. <laughs> of yeah, course, absolutely. right? Yeah. So they have this offer. They just have no hesitation to get on, you know, that blank sheet of paper with crayons and be able to draw hope. And so um, I think part of it is drawing hope, what that hope looks like for you. But then also saying, okay, so in my business, in my company, in my leadership role, where do I want to take things next? I mean, we are seeing radical disruption of systems that we really relied on um, prior, to, prior to this COVID-19. And so those systems are being disrupted and there's opportunity in between those spaces of disruption. And I really believe that finding a way to tap into that white space um, drawing provides you the white space, like literally a blank sheet of paper, provides you the white space for you to be able to tell your story in a new way, look at your business model and say, okay, two months from now, three months from now, six months from now, what's going to be relevant here? And what isn't going to be relevant? And where should I put my time, my focus, my energy, my passion, so that I can build my own path to um, getting on the other side of this intact, healthy, feeling good with all my people and also with a vibrant business. 
Okay, now everybody's like, okay, wait, 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 wait. I want all of that. She said like a hundred things and I got to go back. So let's unpack it just a little bit. So let's go back yeah. to what I like what you said is, you know, you step into be strong with this sisterhood. And what I always am, talk about a lot is we consider each other sisters, which is a different way to look at someone other than a vendor, right? And yeah, it's exactly. A bit different than a partner because it's that family thing, which is like here through thick and thin, etc. So I think if we're talking to people that are not in the camp experience sisterhood that we refer to, um, it, it's surround yourself with people that you treat like family, even if in a normal world, which I think normal is now over. This is the new normal. Um, in a normal world, you may not interact with them as much, but you can use this time that you have on your hands to build some little deeper relationships and good conversations and um, collaboration and, you know, kind of stand for others, give to get kind of idea. Um, so what I heard you say is, uh, absolutely. The first, the first thing is this feeling that you're not alone. And then if you're feeling you are alone, then there's so many people reaching out. Um, I know in the Camp Experience Network, every Monday night, seven o'clock, we have chats and every event's online. And I'm sure many of your different connections all over the world are reaching out. Well, and I, so just to build on that, I think we're finding different ways to reach out too. So last night, my husband and I attended a sing-along that was being done in Portland, Oregon, and people from all over the world like joined in. And so we're having new experiences and connecting with new people. But yeah, it always comes back to family. It comes back to home wherever right. that is for you. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to encourage everybody, like family is not this thing that like, okay, you have your biological family, right? But it's okay. Like, I think the new norm is your family is who you collaborate with, treat like family, you know, intend to be a good part of their life. Like you can broaden this term of family to family by choice, which I know a famous TED talk choose your family, change your life. I know that TED talk really well. It was very well memorized still. Okay. So then number two, you were saying, um, like hope, like hope is the next, like, um, one thing we need to do is visualize and say what hope is. So let's get a little bit more into talking about drawing because, um, you know, for me, that's something that I'm a doodler. I go way back as a doodler, but if you're not right, if like, if you're one of those people that start the conversation by saying, I am not creative, can you help anybody just pick up a pen and any piece of paper and draw some hope. How would you kind of coach them through that? Yeah, so um, actually drawing doesn't have as many, um, uh, you know, letters as our alphabet. There's really only four, sometimes five. It depends on who you talk to. But a great way to start is just by drawing some straight lines on a page, you know, doing this with a, with a pen or pencil, um, drawing a bunch of circles a bunch of squares, a bunch of triangles, because really those four things, out of those four shapes, you can draw anything. So, and by doing that kind of practice or warm up, it actually gets your brain working in a different way and you stop being so obsessed with, oh my God, I can't draw, um, to um, thinking more about the context or the provocative question like, draw some hope. Like, what does hope look like? You start moving more in that direction. It does take practice though. So you want to draw a lot of circles and a lot of triangles because your brain, the more you physically do it, the more comfortable your brain's going to be with actually how to draw. And it becomes less important on the quality of drawing and more about the symbology and the metaphors and the colors that you use that really help inspire and pull you in a new direction. Yeah, I, I would give a cheater, if you don't want to really draw, but kind of draw, is draw a heart and then use words to put anything. This is what we always do for our vision boards for the basis, you know, put words in your heart that you want in your heart, right? So sure. sometimes that's a great place to start because pretty much you can draw a heart. Oh, here's one now. Draw this heart. <laughs> there you go. There's a heart. Um, but then write, you can write, you know, because there's no rules on this. This is all for you. So. Um, sometimes I instruct people in my classes, then just write inside your heart what you want. Love and peace and family and friends and everything. You know, your Ferrari and I want someone to do my nails again and I'm going to need hair color soon. Okay, sorry. Those are things in my personal heart. Right. Um, so then, then on the outside of the heart, you can write affirmations. I am brave. I am strong. And then you can draw arrows in and out and stars. And again, some, somehow if you just are getting your head 
in the creative right brain and sitting down with whatever pen or pencil you have, whatever paper you have, you can start to draw and hopefully unleash your hope. And then the third part, let's go a little bit more because this is what you're such a great expert for organizations and people. So what if I'm in my company, I'm in my girls network and I'm trying to figure out the future. How can I use collaboration and art and drawing to unleash some ideas during this time? Well, I think that um, the first thing is platforms like this, um, podcasts and vlogs and uh, blogging, Facebook Live, the Instagram, there are so many um, ways we can connect with each other. And it's really fun to do this um, together. So you can set up a, um, a meeting if it's with your company or if it's with your girls group and you're like, okay, so we're not going to be able to see each other for six weeks or six months. Like, how are we going to navigate? How are we going to make that through? And in your conversations, um, be able to start sort of building on each other's ideas and then take a moment and draw them on a piece of paper. And then just like here, we can, you know, show things on our screens to be able to say, okay, so this is um, what I can do on the Zoom platform. As, as many of you know, you can actually share documents and those kind of things. But I think um, there, there's two things that happen to our brain when we actually do this collaborative work together um, and try and figure out, it really is the, a navigation exercise. The first thing is that our brains um, get less attached to our own idea about how to navigate out of it and get more attached to how are we going to do it together. So it's really important, even if you're an entrepreneur, um, share a solo entrepreneur, share your drawing, share your ideas with other people so that they can help affirm the things that you know. They can ask you really good questions about things that they don't quite understand and really strengthen and reposition your business. So that's, I mean, that's one way of really being able to share those drawings together and um, collaborate together. The other thing I just want to say is that hope begets hope. And what I mean by that is that the more generative I can be in my drawings and then I share them with somebody like you, Betsy, and you're like, oh my God, that's a great idea. And here's five more ideas that I have that can build off of that. Um, all of a sudden, I don't feel um, so dark. My energy really comes up, my lights go on, and I start thinking about all the ways I can reposition my business, I can reposition my team, I can actually lead my team you know, across an unknown expanse of land. That's what leadership means, is being able to do that. And I can do that with confidence and certainty when everything else is kind of not confident and uncertain. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, and that's what I kind of like about this weird playground called now, you know, it's like, right. Okay, yesterday I had to go to the copier and I stood by the coffee machine and I was at the WeWork, you know, and today I'm not, I'm right. not, it's different. So, um, I, I just think it's a time where we can say, okay, what else is different? You know, Hey, I had a little bit more time to stretch or do yoga. Um, I'm very impressed by the innovation of five camp sisters, I can call them out right now, that have always said, oh, I've wanted to do online classes. I'm too busy. I don't know how to do it. And everybody has an online class, right? right. I think our yoga center and Lindy seeing patients online and doing televisits and Jerry seeing patients online. And it's funny how um, Flossie just told a story on her podcast about uh, Clinica, her, one of her clients downtown yeah. couldn't do telemedicine and it took years and years and years and they're doing telemedicine paid for by Medicare now. And it happened in a week. So exactly. um, it's cool to see somehow when the world changes that there are things that get sped up that are for the common good and that we're going to learn in a fast action environment um, because we have to, because it's different. So right. um, Chris, you are such a blessing. I know people are thinking, how do I find you? I know that you conduct some online. You can now lead teams online. You can gather and talk about all the things you're doing and actually do some of your um visualizing and maps. So will you tell everyone please how to find you? So go to www.arlosoul, A-R-L-O-S-O-U-L.com and click on the learning programs like Courageous Learning. Um, just a, a shameless plug, but in the same spirit that you just articulated, Betsy, we have um, launched a whole online series about virtual tips and tricks to both facilitate and host really effective meetings and large events online. So you can find all of that information at arlosoul.com. Well, there you go. And of course, the information is right here next to the video and it's, uh, it's included with the podcast. Chris, as we've been speaking, you so inspired me. 
that I made this piece of artwork as you were talking. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And, you know, you were saying to draw hope, and I think hope is there is no end to the adventure we can have. Exactly. I, I love think, that. You know, just because of you, I've been inspired to <laughs> come out of my shell and, and try something for the first and time. And Betsy, that was like so fast. <laughs> you, know, you were talking, it was a catalyst. I whipped up some arts and craft supplies. I whipped up the collage and I threw it on the page. But, see how um, easy it is? <laughs> see, everybody, it always is going to look like that. But um, all kidding aside, uh, I do inspirational art and I'm inspired by my friend Chris and all the greatness she brings to the world. And uh, I just so appreciate you and your classes and meetings you're having all virtual. So check out arlasoul.com so you can catch up on everything Chris and Katie and all the great people and things that they are doing. And thanks to all of you who are watching and listening to Sister Strong a podcast and video series about possible. We are here as part of the Global Sisterhood Podcast Network, Women with Voices for Good. Do good, have fun, help each other as a sisterhood on this journey. And everybody's invited to play. Please share this podcast and this video with others that are looking for uplifting ideas, education, inspiration, and great connections to people like Chris and Arla Soul. So you can draw your hope and create your great future. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us today. I'm your host, Betsy Weersma.